much for joining us on this very awesome Monday stream. My name is Rybot01, Publishing Manager for World of Tanks Modern Armor. Uh, this is a very special insider information as we have obviously the always fabulous Tank Source on the background. Say hi, Tank Source. There you go. And last, but yeah, ah, hello, there hello. we go. How's it going, everyone? I was muted, sorry. <laughs> I was like, where are you? Uh, and last but definitely not least, BAM 1500, game designer for World of Tanks Modern Armor. Uh, how are you? Yay. Wonderful. My God, I wish I could have that deep, guttural voice like Tank Source. What an entrance. <laughs> I know, man, if I could only have that voice, that, that would make for a really good uh, <laughs> stream. <laughs> um, before we move forward with the content of the stream there are a couple of things um i don't know if you guys well obviously minto is not here he is feeling under the weather i think uh all the soccer over the weekend to get out of him it was all those matches right. i mean he needs time to recover I it was, it's it was pronounced intense. football football <laughs> oh okay football there you go so um we just want to send a bunch of hearts if you guys can uh, hearts for Minto. Uh, he, uh, he, we hope he feels well. He recovers very, very soon. He'll be back. Don't worry. He's a strong cat. Um, then the next point we need to discuss is, um, if you guys have seen the news, uh, Chicago went through a little thunderstorm slash tornado yesterday, uh, which caused a lot of buildings and a lot of issues here in the city, uh, a lot of power outages. And unfortunately, our office got hit with a power outage, which means the build that we had for tomorrow, which is obviously the Tuesday restart, uh, will have to be postponed until Wednesday. Uh, we are working really, really, really hard to get it back um, for tomorrow on time for all of you guys, since we have really good content. Uh, that We have the Action Heroes Week starting with a kickoff. The plan was tomorrow, but unfortunately, Mother Nature had other plans, so we're going to keep on working really, really hard to see uh, if we can do it on Tuesday, but the targeted date would be on Wednesday. Uh, we're going to disperse that information in all of our channels after the stream as much as we can. Uh, so if you're in the stream, please spread the word just so that everyone knows uh, what's been going on. So yeah, I know, QA <laughs> unfortunate, whatever day is fine. Thank you so much for the understanding. Um, and then I guess we're going to move on right now to talk about the five upcoming maps with one being in custom games. And we're going to go into detail with that. Mm -hmm. So first of all, we want to move on with the opening with BAM 1500. Just a quick catch up. How are you? How are things going? Wonderful. I mean, I'll tell you guys, like, I think a lot of us were very burnt out after our uh, big release for Modern Armor. Uh, and I'm also just very interested to hear, like, from everybody, like, what do you guys think about the four new maps that we have released, uh, both for the Cold War game mode and the World War II? Um, and as always, you know, we have five maps that are coming out really soon to you guys. Uh, in addition, we will continue to restore maps at the same time uh, over the duration of the next couple months. Um, but the, the job is never done, right? We never <laughs> get that much time to rest. It's like we release our new maps and... We got to figure out the next roster of things that we need to get in, figure out. And while we are working on, you know, the visual updating for getting the maps back into rotation to you guys, we also have to consider in the long run of things like, gee, we need some other like brand new maps to deliver as well. Uh, but we are a ways out before we can even have any light discussions even on that at this time. That was such a plan. Um, I think we can kickstart the stream by laying in one of the uh, highly requested maps uh, from a poll that was done through the forums. And thank you again for everyone in the community for participating. So I guess we're going to start with the map Overlord. Overlord. Yes. Let's take a quick peek in here. Um, we already see you here in the M41B Brazilian <laughs> tank. There you go. Launch the game. What did you, uh, what did you call it, Mr. Bam? The maps are oh, in the oven. Can you repeat the question? The, the maps are in the oven. Is that the saying? The maps are in the oven? They're, yeah, they're, they're cooking in the oven. Yeah, they're cooking in the oven. 
I like it. It's a slow rice, but that makes for perfect bread. <laughs> right, let's go ahead so, and swap over to uh, your gameplay here. Okay, let me know when the gameplay is up before I start rolling around. Oh, we're we're in. Oh, we are in. Okay. We're in it oh, to this... win it. In it to win it. All right, guys. So we just jumped in into a single user match uh, in Overlord. Uh, I am taking control of the camera today, uh, with Liam being out. He's usually my cameraman, and I kind of guide him through the map. But I, I will do my best to gently <laughs> take a look around here. We got kind of a Frankenstein setup for our, our stream today. Uh, as uh, Rybot, you pointed out, we had some outages in Chicago. Uh, but we got the stream going. We are still going to be running this. Uh, so Overlord, uh, as you guys know, it's the 77th an uh, anniversary of uh, D-Day the storming of the beaches of Normandy. So this was kind of a, a an obvious choice of something that we also wanted to get in uh, for you know around the early summertime release for the next set of maps. Uh, in terms of updates that the map has received, on design end, not a whole lot, but there are things that I can point out. Right away, you guys might take notice that we are actually looking at uh, two bases on the defenders team. So something that we are going to be experimenting with and will be uh, like available in random battle rotation is multi-base assault. For those of you that might not know, you probably are familiar with the assault game mode. That is one team is defending a base and then the other team is the attackers who have to uh, either capture that base or destroy all the enemies on that team. Uh, that game mode was always a bit divisive by the community and not all maps actually supported Assault. Uh, over time, as you guys may have noticed, Custom Games did have multi-base Assault throughout all the maps that we released and are, I believe, in the Modern Armor updates. So you guys could check them out. And with the feedback from the community and the super testers, we made some tweaks and adjustments uh, to help the balance and to actually have this as a deliverable to you guys in Random Battle. Uh, so what we are looking at here is multi-base assault on Overlord. And like I said, like assault, it's the same premise. Defenders now have two bases to defend. And the attackers, they only have to capture at least one base to claim victory for the map. For the match, rather. Were uh, there any changes um, other than gameplay to the map? Um, basically, now that we have Cold War, added to modern armor um what has been some of the adjustments improvements maybe none at all so to keep modern armor or the, the cold war game mode in mind for a lot of these maps we set our own metrics to decide whether a map is playable and fun on cold war versus world war ii uh, a lot of the maps that we are restoring are obvious choices to return to world war ii because that's where they were founded in uh for Cold War, a few things that we had to take note on, and actually I can go a little bit further when we take a look at the next map in line. Um, this map in particular will not be in the Cold War game mode uh, due to it being a slightly smaller map, uh, the teams spawning a little bit too close and being able to fire on each other from a much closer distance than what is really considered good gameplay for a map like this. Gotcha. Um... But otherwise, all the maps receive the same kind of art upgrade that our environment artist teams uh, go through to up the textures, uh, adapt the, the lighting to our new lighting and rendering systems to the game, uh, as well as the, the grass and the culturals. We're now using like more micro textures and uh, lower grass, so it's not as concealing anymore and uh, obstructing to your view. This is all things a lot of our veteran players know, because that's some of the stuff that we have been updating on the maps thus far uh, since our 6.0 release. In terms of some design changes, I think everyone knows Normandy, or I'm sorry, Overlord here, is the map where you don't go to the beach. You go to the beach, you're not really helping your team out. For the demonstration of uh, this playthrough on the stream, we are going to go to the beach. But some of the things that we did add here was a little bit of uh, some kind of rock slides. And they act as more of a, a quick getaway if you absolutely need to get down there. Say if you're kind of cornered and you have no other route uh, through. 
be mindful. These are steep slopes here, but you can make your way down. Ah, it's too steep. No, no. <laughs> this is, uh, be confident in yourself. This is everyone's favorite zone to go to, right? To uh, try and hold out in one of those little ships. <laughs> You know, if you are a light tank player or a medium tank player, like, sure, coming down here might have some advantage. It's it's very clear. As you can see, there's little to no cover. You've got some of these dunes here that are kind of raised up to give you some cover. Um, if you hug along the cliff walls, that gives you some good cover from anyone trying to gun you down from up above. They, tanks don't have the gun depression to reach you from down here. But again, the, taking the strategy trying to play the match from down here, you're actually abandoning the rest of your teammates up above. So when you are down here, the enemies are now encroaching on your territory uh, and your allies are now outnumbered. But so the flanking potential, think of the flanking potential. There is a lot of flanking potential. <laughs> and taking to the beach might be more of a late game uh, tactic, you know? Uh, early game, like try to keep your front lines well equipped. I uh, I was working with uh, my coworkers uh, from the content team on taking images from this map for the portal article. I remember messaging you that you know taking images from this map. It's it made me so uncomfortable because everything looks so good and because this, these are the shores of Normandy. Um, the I level of detail to set the stage in this map is. It's outrageous that it it look it just looks so good. It's definitely one of our more moodier maps. There's a haze in the sky, the the light fog kind of coming through. Um, it is a little bit blinding when you're looking uh, out to the eastern side. Uh, you no, know, it, it was a traumatic time, and you know the the artists kind of captured it the best that they can. Uh, well, just look That's at okay. all the ships. <laughs> Were there any adjustments or um, additions to the audio in this map? You know, I believe a lot of it was additions to the um, to adapt with the theater of war. Gotcha. So all the the uh, the parachuters actually there are parachuters coming in, but I don't think they? I believe they're on the west or the north side rather. They come in once in a while, but otherwise a lot of the artillery fire. Uh, in the distance from the battleships. Um, you will hear some booms from them and such. That was the first thing I actually noticed, which is the, uh, like, our artillery barrages in the distance that you could hear. Ooh. That's intense. Uh, we actually have a question from Yukon Butt. He says yes. that, it's a question more uh, of confirmation, maybe you can uh, answer it. Is this map going to be available in Cold War? Uh, I, I briefly touched upon that when I was describing like our metrics to deciding if a map is available in Cold War. Uh, in random battle, no. Unfortunately, this map will be locked to just World War II. Uh, reason being, again, uh, it, it is a smaller map. Uh, one of the metrics that is very important, I'm going to also cover this a little bit more in depth in the next map that we're going to discuss, uh, time to engagement. This is a, a very important uh aspect to deciding how well does a map play for it doesn't even have to be just for cold war but just gameplay in general uh and time to engagement is say when you or any one of your allies first makes contact with the enemy team uh typically that time is an average between 30 to 60 seconds in any given match and that is typically a good range to determine like okay here's where the enemies are going and now we're kind of seeing the, the different flanks of the enemies at the different sides of the maps to kind of give a, uh, a sense of your team where you guys need to move up to counter them. Uh, for Cold War, or let's say, say this map specifically, the time to engagement on this was more like 20 seconds, maybe even less. And it wasn't just one player spotting another player uh, on the enemy team. It was more like half of your team also spotting the other half of the team. And so it becomes a more of a, a match of attrition where there's, the tactics are kind of thrown out the window and it's just a kind of a slaughter fest of whoever's the last tank standing kind of wins. And it's just rapid fire and being on the move. Uh, and, you know, maybe there are some players that want to enjoy that. And that is why we do keep maps like this available in custom games. If that is something you guys just want to have some all-out just uh, shotgun fighting with your tanks, like 
you can do that, but we are not going to push that into the random battle rotation. Um, so it would kind of turn into just like a giant brawl and toss all the exactly. out the window. Exactly that. And it's you if it's very it's very telling in the first playtest match that we would do it and it's like okay this is just I don't know where I want to go there's no successful route let's just do the best you can and hope you win you know Here's a interesting question from uh, Kube it says how does a map team choose spawn points and uh, what is the process is it trial and error or how does that work How do we choose spawn points Correct so a lot of these, because we are restoring maps from World War II, we are inheriting the, the placements of them from prior. But using heat map data and the win rate data that we get from uh, you guys as the players, uh, we use that to kind of help tell us where do we need to move and adjust the spawn points for a better balance. Um, for instance, if there's a... if in, in Overlord, if we're playing standard battle where it's a north versus south team, and I see the north team has a very strong, uh, a very high win rate, and there's a strong presence of say on the heat map, I see a lot of players congregating along the uh, the east middle and uh, let's say around the the uh, the E zero grid line, and they are able to move up a lot quicker than the south team. We kind of see this as an issue, and we need to draw back some of these spawn points a little bit further from the north team from the east side. That's just one tactic to do it. Another thing that we can also do is assign spawn points um, to say this will be more, we want to prioritize these select spawn points for heavy tanks. And over here, we want to select these spawn points for uh, the light tankers, right? Uh, and typically we, we try to have a rule to always push the heavy tanks kind of at the front line have the light tanks in the back, they can get around those guys no problem and zip right on ahead. Uh, and then, of course, artillery and the tank destroyers will also kind of sit in the back. Uh, really quick, I know I got two minutes on the match, uh, and I also want to point out, we, we still have four more maps to cover, so I think I'm going to call it here on the match uh, and head back into Garage. Uh, tank Souls, I don't good. know if you Sounds need good. to disable the feed on this temporarily. We're good. Okay. <laughs> Switch. All right. I guess we are also going to move on. Oh, come on. The next map on the list. Everyone is waiting for this one. Well, it's just basically me <laughs> at this point. Oh, no, 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 no. Wait, it's, it is everybody. This is a, a favorite among the players, among the community, and amongst us internally. Um, yes. This was oh, an God, easy selection, on. quite honestly. <laughs> one second here. Yeah. The suspense is killing us. Oh, what are we going to be? Do it. <laughs> All right, are you ready, Tank Source? Should I load it on up? We're always ready. Ooh, Wait. Tank Source. Players are already calling it out. They're already calling it out. Yeah, no, uh, of course. Oh, oh I, I, just, it, I just took a I, sneak peek. I like this one. <laughs> Here we go. Oh, and I just love it that you guys brought back the cherry blossom trees <laughs> in it. I love Welcome it. Welcome to Eastfield. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, beautiful. Westfield is making its triumphant return, guys. Yes, I'm super, super, super excited. It is a beautiful map, uh, very bright. Um, really, uh, in terms of the game modes on this, it's all the same ones that you guys are familiar with. We did make adjustments to the team destruction spawns. Now, take a look at the uh, the grid map here. So on Team Destruction, we actually used to have the, the team spawns are roughly at E1 and about A5, A6-ish. Um, we were going to leave it as is because technically the win rate data was, it was decent enough. But super testers have kind of voiced opinions on it, and we wanted to take that into heart and in, in consideration. Uh, but you know what? Let's move them into the corners, much like the standard battle is, to have it in the southwest and the northeast corners instead. So in terms of design changes, that is kind of the big thing here, as well as, again, we have another multi-base assault uh, game mode for this map as well. Now that you're mentioning the, the new edition, uh, Great Graham was asking... Uh, if we're going to add assault mode to all the maps in custom battles, if we're gonna 
Oh, and assault mode. Oh, to oh, oh, okay. They're asking, will assault mode come to all maps? Yes. We can look into that. In fact, I do know there are certain maps that I think even like Mountain Pass has assault that we never like set to live in random battle, and it's just been it's just a file that has it disabled. Uh, there will be a little bit more extra work on our end to not only enable it, but also do some other setups and make sure things are. Um, good for the spawns because there has been some geometry changes from the artists on these maps um m mostly some extra foliage uh some extra rocks geometry um and we got to be very conscious that this doesn't interfere with the spawn placements and typically it's pretty safe because uh, they are aware of where they are placing these changes in the map uh, but in terms of adding it back like we can absolutely do that I can't promise that's not going to be coming into the next update of the game, but in the future, we can certainly look into that. Okay. Now, um, let's talk a little bit more about this map uh, changes, adjustments, and if it's going to. Well, let's talk about the design first. Um, did this map go to any iteration of adjustments, or did the design team just kind of. Uh, added a couple of things here and there to adjust gameplay for. Uh, current tanks that are in game, or what's the story there? What's the story? What's the story? Uh, this map being very well balanced and very well loved by the players, trying to make any uh, design adjustments to it into the gameplay, I feel like why fix what's not broken? Uh, so no, there really isn't any changes to the map. It just received its big art uh, pass and update to it. Uh, but there has been some considerations working with the super testers where uh, there is extra foliage in the map. As we do with all the maps, we kind of increase the density a little bit, but we didn't actually add new areas to have more foliage in it. So one of the requests that came from our super testers was, can we get more foliage along this hillside um, around the H8 area, which is already kind of a campy area where the TVs like to go uh, and hang out. There is some brush there already. Adding any extra on there, I think, is going to be, it's going to tip the scales in balance if we do so. So we chose not to increase that, not to encourage more camping snipers in that zone, and leave it as is. Um, I'm actually going to head on over there right now to kind of show you guys. Um, so something we really wanted to try and make this work in terms of uh, the Cold War game mode. This being a very well-loved map, being very open, a lot of room to kind of move around, and it, it is slightly bigger. It, it is 1,000 meters squared. We were really hoping that this could work for Cold War. And what I will say that it will be available in post-war, but not in Escalation or Detente. And it's the same reason I kind of described before in Overlord, that the time to engagement uh, technically met the averages that the other maps met, being uh, 30, 30 seconds to 60 seconds. The problem is, it, it's the same issue that Overlord had, where all the whole team would clump either right on the valley in the northwest corner, or right, uh, I'm sorry, not the valley, the, the, the kind of mountain foothills area, or right in the dip valley where the, the village is at. And again, it becomes a, a brawler shotgun fest. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want those. I'm scared of those, man. <laughs> In the future, you know, we might consider some other things to try and make it more uh, viable for the Cold War, because we do want to get more maps into that game mode, absolutely. But we also want to make sure we are not put, pushing something forward that is just not fun or unfair. That's very important. I have a question from Slap a Fish. When you brought the overview map, and also the mini map, um, there seems to be, I personally have noticed the changes. Um, were there any adjustments to the mini map and the way that it looks? Uh, Slapperfish is asking that it, it seems like the mini maps have less color. Ah, well, we technically moved on to a new aesthetic for how we want to represent our radar maps uh, as of the 6.0 update, where it's more of a grayscale elevation change. And we really wanted to emphasize, help emphasize what is the cover points with the, the kind of the blocks in there, where is the foliage, 
and whereas the rivers and the roads. When you have a lot more color in these maps, sure, it's, it's pretty to look at, but a lot of that detail and information that we need to relay to the player for a quick glance at their map does get a little lost. Um, I won't disagree that the colored maps, like they still looked fantastic. We did what we could with them, uh, but we also wanted to really uh, kind of come up with a new focus to make it easy to know what landmarks you need to see uh, and where you need to go a little bit better than it was before. Uh, and in addition to it, not that this is like a, a player request or something, but a fun feature that we added was the map labels on the radar. Those simply didn't uh, read well on the color maps. Uh, and again, we already had the, the, the kind of black and white elevation scale maps at the time of adding in the map labels, but they did definitely pop a lot better on the ones that we have now. JC089 says, awesome, can't wait for this update. And he says, awesome again, double awesome. <laughs> well, in case um, I didn't already say so, uh, both Overlord and Westfield will be playable tiers five to 10, uh, through 10, excuse me. Uh, and Westfield also being playable on post-war in the Cold War game mode. Gotcha. LE2493, are we getting all the revamp maps in one update or through several updates in the coming weeks? So I might need a little bit of clarification. He says uh, all the maps. But all the five maps. The yes. All five maps. Uh, well, I'm happy to uh, say that all five of these maps will be in the next update with the game. Um, okay, so we, again, we got about 20 more minutes with three more maps to cover here. So I think we, I may have to cut this one a little short, unfortunately. Let's go. Let's move on. I guess the next one is, uh, moving there we on. go. It's moving on. El Alamein. Uh, and while we do the switch, Tank Source, I, I think like, do you feel like giving something away? What do you think, dude? We always joke around whenever we ask me that. That one day I'm just gonna say nah. Yeah. <laughs> no, absolutely. Let, let's do it. I'm all for it. Thanks, Lord. This is your day. We're gonna have fun. You pick. What do you want to give away? I'm gonna leave it up to you, dude. Because we love you. You are the best. And yeah, go ham. What do you want to give away? What do I want to give? I, I want to give away whatever the chat wants. Whoa. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> So, let's hear from chat and see what they want. Well, I'll pick okay. one from there. Thanks to John. Drop in chat. What do you want Tank Source to give away in this stream? And we'll see. Oh, <laughs> 100 million gold. This is what happens when you ask the chat <laughs> what you want. You open the floodgates, man. Exactly. Uh, the T95E3, the Mobat tank. Of course, when we spoke about uh, the collaboration with G.I. Joe. Um, uh, let's see the, the Tusk. Wow, the mercenary vehicle month of premium. That now that's a really good giveaway. A month of premium, premium time. See, I, I've seen premium three times already. Uh, Fortress T72. Right. Yes, you know what? <laughs> we'll, we'll, we'll do uh, can we do the premium time? Sure. Oh, Seth, 1995 said a year of premium time. Well, that's, not it. that's a that's a lot of that's a lot of time over there. <laughs> we we got to save okay. those for you know our, our big streams. There we go. Um, so what do people have to do in order to enter the premium time giveaway? Just give me a one second. Month. I got to set that up, and then uh, we'll give you more info on that. But yeah, we'll give a month of premium time. Awesome. Up. We'll continue with Fine. uh with our map stream here we okay are. we're gonna go over to el alamein and right after that we'll kick off the giveaway are you ready bam are you, I'm you ready, ready we to are blow our minds i'm gonna try to keep the next two maps maybe to like five minutes or less because yeah. there's a lot i want to cover in the last map oh you just ran over the choo-choo tracks <laughs> <laughs> thankfully there's no trains going by they shut down the tracks <laughs> Oh well, my gosh, welcome. that would be terrible. <laughs> welcome back to El Alamein. Um, 
So like the other maps, this one also received large uh, art updates, uh, as well as Theater of War, with, the pl uh, the, with a lot of dogfighting going on overhead. A in fact, at some point, I don't know if we're going to make it long enough into the duration of this match, because I will have to cut it short. Eventually, some of the planes like uh, shoot each other down and fall into the mountains in the distance there. It's always exciting to see. Um, and as you guys can also see, we have the multi-base assault set up uh, on this one. With the enemy spawning in the southeast side. And I'm happy to uh, say, like, when we needed to consider what is the next lineup of maps to, to go out with this release, uh, we had the challenge of also finding out, like, we needed compatible maps for Cold War. Cold War needs more maps in addition to the World War II, right? Um, both modes need love, and that's what we're trying to address. Uh, El Alamein was kind of a big winner for us. Because uh, not only will this be available for all three eras in Cold War mode, uh, this will also play very well with some of our new features coming in with this update that I can't really go discuss a little bit about. But I think we've teased a little bit of, uh, of it on social media. And I'll have you guys know this map is exciting to play with some of that on there. This is like good vibes and combination of exposure cover and like frontal attack because when you go up by the by the bay by the seashore i mean you would think that you're exposed but you're really not there's so much coverage in there it's kind of uh deceiving there, yeah even down by the beach now mind you i've never been successful by the beach it's overload all, all over again uh <laughs> there is cover you can work it out down there but I think typically I only head there if I'm playing like a light or medium because I want to get back out as quickly as I can. Um, I know the artists, they exchange a lot of these rock mounds. They used to be kind of just uh, a big clump of rocks, but they kind of given a, a new arch to it, which offers some really neat lighting effects and shadowing, shadow casting from there. Not that this affects gameplay, but it's just a beautification pass that we all kind of strive to do with our maps nowadays right it looks really good um, i mean yeah now as big and sprawling as this map is it is a 1.2 kilometer squared map so it's larger than most of the other world war ii maps uh you get a lot of room to just kind of zip around it's it's a light tanker's uh paradise but you gotta be absolutely careful as we have a lot of these kind of shelves that stick out of the sand dunes and you might survive. If you land uh, off of it just right, you, you might be fine, maybe take minor damage. Most cases, I've blown up. The T-Bear 55 looks amazing. Kudos to the map guys. We, we're getting so many positive comments on chat. Um, a couple of uh, people said that they missed this map, that it was years ago that they played it. And uh, <laughs> that looks really, really good, especially, you know, with the awesome graphics of your amazing consoles <laughs> <laughs> you know it's a huge kudos to the art like on design side like we had to work on picking out the maps and adapting them to a lot of our systems um with the, the newest updates that we have done but it's been a huge heavy lifting by the artist to do all this work as well um so uh to point out this map will be playable from tiers five through ten in world war ii and available on post-war uh, escalation and detente. That's eras one, two, and three in Cold War. Awesome. Well, since you gave up uh, the availability for game modes, why don't we move on to the next map? I was about uh, to suggest the same. There we go. See? Great minds think alike. All right. Let's make a bus, go over to the garage. Um, Tank Source, are you there? Yes, we are. Yay! I quit out too early. <laughs> All right. Dun, dun, dun. We <laughs> will give the month of premium. And in order to enter, you have to type in hashtag Watt Tanks. Watt Tanks. Ooh, can I enter? <laughs> <laughs> you can, I want to stand from you entering. Won't, won't <laughs> oh no! There we go, and the chat goes wild. 
I see a bunch of people, you know, it's been a while since I've been on stream. So uh, thank you so much for putting up with me. <laughs> uh, I know you guys miss Minto. I, I, I hope he's feeling better. I'm sure he's watching or maybe he's Perito right now. Um, <laughs> we want him to get better soon. It was all of that football soccer. Um, let's see. We already have a lot of people. While the chat continues to uh, type in hashtag watch tanks for a chance to win one month of premium time. Let's move on to the next uh, map. Uh, we haven't really said the name of it, but I'm pretty sure players already know where this is going. It's actually one of the smallest maps that we have in game, correct? It's a smaller one, but it's, I wouldn't say it is the smallest. <laughs> Which one's the, the smallest would be back in the day would be province, was it? Province. province. Yeah. yeah, got it. Uh, I remember. Consider some of our event mode maps. <laughs> Those get smaller. All right, let's kick it off. Are we good? We're doing this. There we go. Oh, yeah. We are now back in Ghost Town. Whoa, and there's things coming from the sky. <laughs> yeah, be careful out there. Not just six. <laughs> now, uh, tell us a little bit more about this. Um, we mentioned during the article that this map wasn't planned to go live, not anytime soon, but what happened? <laughs> okay, so this was a surprise to me as well, uh, a pleasant one. Uh, so early on, like we work with the artists and we kind of pitch our map plan going months in advance, even beyond this update. We kind of know what's coming down later down uh, in the line. And the artists had uh, some extra bandwidth to get a head start on this map for the next update. Uh, on design side, we did some minor work just to have it play testable internally, but otherwise the, the artists were kind of doing their end of the work to have it ready, and that way that gives them more time to even work on uh, content uh, in the, at, even after this next update. Uh, we held a meeting, not even like three weeks ago, even less than that possibly, uh, and, we, and we got the pleasant surprise from the, our lead artist uh, that, well, Ghost Town's going to make it in before our lockdown date. Uh, so we kind of agreed, like, well, if, if, our, if aesthetically it's good to go, what else is left to kind of add in and update to make this compatible and playable before the update goes live? Um, so we did our end of the work on design just to make it playable into the rotation. I had to work uh, with engineering a little bit and uh, audio for any needs that they have to get in, as well as effects. Uh, and we did it. Like, we got Ghost Town in last minute. One extra map for you guys this update, thankfully. Uh, because this one's coming in hot off the presses, uh, we didn't get much time to truly play test it in Cold War. We did try it out. And I'm going to tell you right away, this is going to be remaining in World War II game mode only. Um, for the same reasons I have described on both Overlord and Westfield, this one is also just kind of a shotgun fest. Uh, but beyond that, it's going to be a welcome change to have back in rotation for you guys in World War II. And for those of you that might not know what this map is, you can probably tell by looking at the mini-map. Here's the mega map now. It's a very uh, uh, equal-balanced map. where It's, it's very symmetrical. I believe uh, this originally was a Clan Wars map from PC that we have adopted to our console version. And some of the changes that we made working with the super testers, there uh, is a hill on the south side that was accessible, but the north side did not. So we did end up having to close off that hill just to have you know, absolute equal balance and no, no sense of unfair play that some people get a, a height advantage while the other team does not. I love it how you're just like driving around, uh, going through like a couple of bumps and like, I'm going to land just fine. <laughs> I w this map, I don't think, um, from what I remember when it was out and about, uh, I remember being a light tank and just going around in less than a, a minute because this map is somewhat small compared to what what's life in game right now. Exactly. <laughs> Yeah, even playing in, like, Era 1 in uh, uh, Cold War, you get across the map pretty quickly. So we, we're playing our cards safe and be like, this is not going to offer great gameplay for the players. We have requests for you to jump off the wall. 
no, we're not going to have Bam jump off the wall. <laughs> well, unfortunately, I think we need to call it because the next yeah. one is very important. There's a lot to discuss. And I was actually hoping for more time to go over on that one. Let's Sounds go uh, move on. I'm going to exit out of this. I'm going to try to load into it uh, as quickly as I can. <laughs> for yeah. the time being, uh, tank source. Yes. You feel like giving away stuff? Yeah, I mean, we haven't given away the last one yet. Dun, dun, dun. Well, let us know if you have the name of the yeah, winner. We have the name of the winner. <gasps> Are we ready? No. Okay, yes. I'm scared. I All hope right. I won. Congratulations <laughs> to... Bam, give us a drum roll. Nash, 8088. Congratulations. Woo, congrats, dude. Uh, go ahead and uh, send Tank Sores or Rybot a message. And uh, we'll get you hooked up with all your in-game goodies. Give us your uh, gamer tag and console that you play on. I want to give more stuff away. <laughs> Maybe but we should be asking you, Rybot. I do. Do you want what? to give something away? Maybe we should be oh. asking you. Of course I want to give stuff away. What can I give away? Oh my gosh. Um, I know players were asking for really cool stuff. Um, it's been a while since I've been on stream, uh, but I don't, also don't want to get in trouble. Oh, the possibilities are endless. I don't know All what right, to do cool. with myself. Are, are we able to give away a tank? Think about it while we were playing in this map here. Yes, let's do this. Ooh. Sorry, I freaked out for a moment. My stream is stuttering. <laughs> oh, there we go. Okay, now we are in the map. Now this is the... Uh, uh, we're not going to call it new map because it's been out. However, the name has changed and it's called now Halfaya Pass. Yes. All right, kick it off, Bam. Okay, so a lot of, of our players, you guys are probably familiar with this one from before. We decided to go with a brand new map, and this was actually pitched by our super testers. We asked them, we want a new name for the map. Um, and we got a, a nice list of them, and we decided to go with Hellfire Pass. Now, a lot of our players, or maybe, maybe just half of you, might remember this map um, on the PlayStation 4, where it made, first made its debut I don't recall the exact date. If I had a guess, maybe 2016. This is the restoration of uh, Hellfire Pass at its largest scale. This is a 1.5 kilometer squared map, the largest map that we have in our game. Then when we needed to adopt this map to the Xbox, uh, we needed to adjust the borders, unfortunately, to kind of address the, the hardware capabilities. So we had to scale down to uh, just a 1,000, I, I believe it was a 1,000 squared map at that point. And quite honestly, and I'll be honest with you guys, I'm repeating myself here, uh, the balance was very difficult to work with in the scaled down version of this map. And nor were players very excited about this map. There are a lot of concerns to address with it, uh, being there's a lot of, uh, Liam's gonna love this word, if you're on here, Liam, uh, terrain undulation. Uh, and very tall, steep hills to climb. Why is that an issue, though? Because there's a lot of tankers that getting from point A to point B in a map, it's very difficult, and you have to be very decisive early on on your choice and your route. Otherwise, you're picking a, a direction that might commit you to a long haul up a hill, only to find out you're, you are kind of missing the battle elsewhere. Um, and, and that is partly due to the size of this map. Uh, and so I'm here to announce to you guys, which you, you may be already aware of, as I believe we um, addressed this on the article, is we are working this map to be the next community map. So what does that mean exactly is, like I said before, there's balance concerns that we uh, are seeing. Uh, the players are going to notice some issues that they're not going to like. And um, this also came up by the super testers. And in, in our internal play tests, working with the, uh, the artists and he, us on design, there were just high level goals that we wanted to achieve with this map. But with the time permitted, we were not able to deliver what we really wanted to get in here. But what we did have time was at the very least, making this map compliant with our systems and the game right now, 
so you guys can get in and play it. All this being said, this map will be available to you guys in custom games when we launch with the, uh, the next update. And so what we are asking is you guys, the players, to help us play test this map. What we will be doing is playing with you guys. Um, I've done it before with you guys in the past. Uh, Rybot, I think you've joined on some of those play tests as well. As well as a lot of other designers and developers, we would host uh, during our work days uh, custom game lobbies to have you guys join us, ask us questions, and play around. And so what happens is we're not just kind of play testing and getting a feel for the map itself. We are also collecting the win rate data. We are also collecting the heat map uh, position and uh, kill death data. And that is something that we like to be absolutely clear on what this data, uh, it, what the data looks like and what we plan to do with that data. But in addition to that, we want to kind of pitch to you guys ideas with that data to how we can improve this map, whether it's just scaling down the height field to kind of reduce the climb on the, uh, the steep inclines. Uh, maybe it's cutting down, uh, trimming a whole cave system through. I'm getting very elaborate here, but just cutting a whole mountain in half or something for a new pathway through. Um, these are sort of the things that I want to work with you guys in the community to really figure out how can we deliver this map to be the best potential that it really should be. Um, and then really quick, this is the tall... Uh, mountain I wanted to show in the steep climb. I'm in a light tank that can drive up this typically pretty fast, but imagine being any other like TD uh, uh, or a heavy tank getting up here. You might take a couple minutes. Like you can do it. <laughs> See that horsepower. <laughs> there you go. You're there. Wow. But for a lot of our players who have not seen this large version, let me go venture into the uh, the southeast end of this map here, because this is going to be like all new. This whole hill section of it was basically the borders of the original map. I remember that, that it had to be kind of adjusted to make it smaller, but the original one was insane. It was huge. Yes. As you destroy property, um, I guess, <laughs> there goes... Quick, quickest point from point A to point B. <laughs> Through someone's property. <laughs> there we go. Wow, this map is huge. Yeah, kind of a, an airfield down over this way. You kind of touched up a little bit on this, but uh, spawn points for this would definitely have to be adjusted, especially with the uh, custom additions. So that's another thing that we have to keep in consideration. We just got some functionality that allows us to actually um, take spawn points. I think my feed is lagging. Sorry about that. Um, to be able to designate spawn points for Cold War game mode versus World War II. Um, what we don't want to do is have the spawn points in the lower uh, left corner for, one for Team A and Team B is all the way up on the upper right. And then have this playable for tier fives. Uh, it, it'll be a very long, drawn out match that will often end in a timeout, I would imagine. But we do have the functionality to be more flexible and have Cold War spawns in those long reaches. But on World War II, we can actually push them up forward a little bit more. So that way, you know, you still have access to the full map. But if you want to just capture the base or just get to the enemy territory quicker, you have that opportunity. Meanwhile, still having the chance to go along the outskirts or the lesser traveled areas of the map. Uh, Broke One has a question. How long do we intend uh, to test this before it's added to rotation? Oh, I actually wanted to cover that, actually. So I do have a very rough timeline, but I can't make the, that, that kind of commitment or promise yet, as this is something that I haven't quite pitched to our production and art teams yet. But my goal, if I was to draw a comparison, if you guys remember the community map that we worked on last year and released this past uh, February or March for Vineyards, that process was a year and a half. Mind you, yeah, that so... map was made from the ground up. We had a blank slate, you guys. Uh, Hellfire Pass here, we have the foundation. We have a map here. 
And what it will, will really come down to is the complexity of the adjustments that needs to be made. So after we kind of make our first phase adjustment, after we do our playtesting with you guys, the players, we get that data, and then we pitch that data back to you with our um, proposed changes that we'd like to make. We'll host a poll. You guys can vote on the changes that you'd like to see. And we were also very active before in the forums, and then we'll probably also be active on the Discord channel to kind of see some suggestions that players are coming up with. And if there's like great ideas like, hey, we can easily throw this in. This is like going to fit in really great with this map. I think we can adopt that. Um, all that being said, my aim is to get this done a little bit quicker than we did with the Vineyards map. Absolutely. But again, that's going to come down to the complexity and the get this map in a state that is going to be playable the way we want it to be. That's the goal. Awesome. I think we are at the end of the stream. Anything else you want to add before we wrap up uh, how far you pass? As you guys can tell, I hardly got time to even travel this entire map. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> um, the, the, I will say the goal with this map is to make it playable from tiers 5 and all the way up. Uh, full Cold War eras and all uh, tiers 5 through 10. That's the big uh, game plan with this. Uh, we really look forward to like uh, playtesting with you guys. We will work with uh, uh, with you guys in publishing and Liam to try to set up a good time frame to have this kind of all up and running. Awesomeness. So Thank like you so very much, Brendan, for uh, the very detailed walkthrough of these fantastic five maps. We're looking forward to it. Uh, the community is wild. They're looking forward to all of them, play them. Have fun with them. Destroy tanks. <laughs> um, we actually want to do a last giveaway, and I actually want to go ham on it. And if I, it is what it is. So we're <laughs> gonna pick two winners from chat for a chance to win all the crimson vehicles and the cold steel vehicles. So I am talking that two players are going to get. Six tanks, the Minotaur KV-5, the Hydra IS-6, the Ragnarok T-34-100, as well as the Demolisher T-28, the Eradicator Carnivore, and last but not least, the Earth Shaker Surf 102. Jeez. I'm sorry, 102. There we go. Um, so, yeah. Oh, yeah. I want to see the world. Woo! Excitement on chat. Otherwise, I'm not going to do the giveaway. Um, <laughs> there Woo! we go. <laughs> Woo! Now we're talking. Yeah, so much stuff, says Comrade Spot. In order for two special tankers to win the set of six tanks, I got I want you guys to type in chat along with your correct gamer tag. What what do we type, Brendan? Uh, let's do hashtag Minto Binto because we miss him and we hope he feels better. Shout so out just, to Minto. Shout out to Minto. So hashtag Minto Binto and we're gonna pick two. Lucky winners from our chat. Uh, yeah, no, where everyone's like going crazy and extreme. Uh, Lady Obscura liked your shirt, Bam. I saw her comment. <laughs> I, I guess I, I gotta wear a cat shirt next time. <laughs> <laughs> well, her, why not? So I gotta go. I gotta go shopping now. <laughs> uh, um, we're not gonna play uh, preferentials here, but out of the five maps coming out, which one is your favorite, Bam? Uh oh, he's thinking. <laughs> I'm about to say El Alamein. El Alamein? Okay. For, for a lot of our Cold War uh, playtesting that we have done internally, again, I, I can't disclose um, information and details on features coming, but there were some awesome moments that we've had in our playtest that just makes that map work and shine. Nice. And what about you, Tank Source? Out of the five maps, which one are you looking forward to playing the most? El Fire. Ooh. <laughs> Hellfire. You guys join us for this play test when we uh, start getting this community map initiative running. Nice. Let's do this. Um, let me double check on if we have the winners. Give me one second. Bum, 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 bum. Tank source. Uh, if you check Skype, do you do we have the winners? Bum, 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 bum. Let me see. There we if go. I check Skype. Do we have the winners? 
Dun, 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 dun. We have the winners. Awesome. Oh my God. Chat, are you guys ready? Two of you are going to walk out with six of the most coveted tanks for World War II. Oh my God. Even Bix is here to witness this heroic, <laughs> legendary moment. Let's do it, Tank Source. Take it away. Our first winner is Skillful Turtle. Congratulations. And our second <laughs> winner is Prime Gaming Kalium. Congratulations. Congratulations. Congrats. Well, since we have your gamer tags, uh, Liam or Minto Bimto will come back and process all the crediting. So give us 72 hours to credit the tanks to your accounts. I hope you guys had a fantastic day. Uh, Bam, 1500 again. It was always a pleasure having you on stream. Uh, we cannot wait for these maps to hit the game. Um, and then before we sign out with Tank Source, I want to remind everyone uh, that I, for what I talked to earlier in the stream, um, Mother Nature decided to play one on us and we had uh, outages in Chicago, which is going to delay the release of the update tomorrow uh, where we usually have it on Tuesdays mornings. So we are looking for a release of Wednesday. Um, and if everything goes well, hopefully we can revert back to publishing it on Tuesday. Um, but yeah, we're going to disperse that information, whatever we can online. So if you're watching the stream, make sure you tell all of your World Tanks Modern Armor friends that the update will not be tomorrow, but on Wednesday. Right? Absolutely. All right. Thanks for having Thanks. me, guys. Yeah, thank you so much for being part of the stream. Tank Source, do you want to sign us out? As always, uh, thank you, everyone, for coming on. And uh, please stay tuned, and we'll hand you off to one of our lovely CCs. So stick around, everyone. Until next time. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye.